Heart disease is a leading cause of death globally. The most common form of heart disease is coronary heart disease, a condition affecting the blood vessels that supply the heart. In 2008, around 7.3 million people died from this condition. We are told that high cholesterol levels are a major risk factor for coronary heart disease. Stop any person on the street, including children, and ask them what causes heart disease, they'll tell you. They know the word cholesterol. It's quite a complicated chemical word. And children already know it from a very young age. We now seem to worry about cholesterol levels as much as heart disease itself, and a new disease known as hypercholesterolemia has emerged. In the United States, it's part of a yearly ritual to get your cholesterol level managed. And you think that your cholesterol level is like your overall grade on your, uh, on your future health. The focus on cholesterol has also led to a global cholesterol-lowering industry that generates billions of dollars each year for pharmaceutical companies and food manufacturers. You just can't get away from high cholesterol. More than 40 million people now take medications known as statins to lower their cholesterol levels. Statins have become one of the most widely prescribed categories of drugs in medical history. These are the number one profit makers for the pharmaceutical industry. These are the darlings of the pharmaceutical industry. This is their babies. However, a number of doctors and researchers have for decades been questioning the role cholesterol plays in heart disease. People believe it to be true. They believe they've read it, they've read it, they've read it. It's not there. It's just non-existent. And strong evidence exists to suggest that the benefits of statins have been exaggerated by pharmaceutical companies keen to increase their profits. We are beginning to see now that a lot of the facts that we are given are actually somewhat manipulated. Doctors are not trained in nutrition. They know no more than you do. It's a very hierarchical world medicine. International opinion leaders say it, the national opinion leaders agree. No one's going to stand up and go, well, I don't believe that. This stands as organized crime, but there's a lot more money in this. And in fact, many, many more people get hurt. Well, the idea that cholesterol saturated and or saturated fat causes heart disease, I mean, you can actually track this back to a chap called Virchow, who is still sort of renowned for certain other discoveries. He looked at people who had died in accidents and in autopsies, looked at their arteries, found that they had thickenings in their arteries, had a look at them and decided that they were full of cholesterol. So up until 1917, no one even thought there was such a disease as heart disease, really. And it was only really after the Second World War when in America there appeared to be thousands and thousands of youngish, healthy men dropping dead of heart attacks that it really first really became an important issue. Since the last war, nutrition has become a science, according to Dr. Keyes. Ansel Keyes was a well-known physiologist. As an advisor to the US Department of Defense during World War II, he formulated meals for combat soldiers that became known as K-rations. Keyes was also the lead investigator of the Minnesota Starvation Experiment, a human starvation experiment involving 36 conscientious objectors. In 2011, a report published by the Associated Press revealed a number of unethical medical experiments had been conducted in the past in the United States. One of these experiments involved injecting 11 volunteers with malaria, then starving them for five days. One of the authors of this study was Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys is also regarded as the father of the diet heart hypothesis, the idea that dietary saturated fat raises cholesterol levels and causes heart disease. So cholesterol at the time was a convenient villain. We had this problem of atherosclerosis, a hardening of the arteries, and there was a great deal of pressure, a need really, to blame it on something. A chap called Ansel Keys came along and said, I know what causes heart disease. Heart disease is caused by eating. Well, initially he said eating cholesterol, but he found that if you ate cholesterol, it had no effect on cholesterol levels. He then said, well, it must be saturated fat. He drew a graph in, in which he, sh he showed six countries, the amounts of fats in calorie terms along the x-axis and the numbers of heart disease deaths in that, those countries. And he drew what was probably the most perfect graph you can get. It was a superb line, marvellous. There's a flaw. 
because at the time that Keyes did this in 1953, there were data from 22 countries he could have used. He didn't use the 16 that didn't agree. And when you add those to his graph, there is no relationship at all. You find countries with much higher levels of heart disease eating less fat and vice versa. It was pure manipulating, or we could call it fraud. This is pure fraud. Despite the obvious problems with this study, the work completed by Ansel Keys is still quoted today as evidence in support of the diet heart hypothesis. Most authorities state that this straight line relationship can also be seen between cholesterol levels and the risk of heart disease. There is a clear, what's called a linear relationship, so it's a straight line between cholesterol levels and risk of heart disease, so there's no plateau. The lower your cholesterol levels in nature, the lower your rate of heart disease. However, there are a number of contradictions to this idea that raised cholesterol levels increase the risk of heart disease. Firstly, for example, the UK does not have a particularly high cholesterol level in comparison to most other European countries and poss possibly worldwide. According to data published by the British Heart Foundation, average cholesterol levels for men in the UK are the 15th lowest on a scale of 45 European countries. Despite this, the UK has one of the highest rates of heart attacks. In addition, cholesterol lowering on a population level does not seem to help. Again, in the UK, the percentage of people with high cholesterol has reduced significantly since 1994. Some age groups now have almost 40% less people with high cholesterol. Yet the rate of heart disease has stayed the same. We have been led to believe that saturated fat and cholesterol simply clog up the arteries and cause a heart attack. But where did this idea come from? And does it have a scientific basis? Certain foods are high in saturated fat. There is an advertisement pushed out by the Food Standards Agency. This is the average amount of saturated fat a person consumes in a month. Where they show a woman taking what they say is saturated fat out of a fridge. She pours it down the sink and it blocks the sink waste pipe up. And then the advertisement says, The saturated fat can clog this pipe. Imagine what it's doing to yours. What they show in the adverts on television is as far from what actually happens as you can get, I should think. You may have seen adverts where people had cigarettes and there was fat coming out the end of it. We've all tried to give up smoking. That's nonsense. It's utter nonsense. So how does fat, the non-existent fat from the cigarettes, end up in your arteries when you smoke? People have said that smoking increases the risk of heart disease. That's true. But when you smoke, other things happen. What actually happens is not the inside of the artery getting blocked by anything. What happens is that the artery wall, called the endothelium, is broken in some way. And just like if you cut your finger, you get a scab form on top of it, which then falls off, a similar thing happens in the artery. You get the damage to the endothelium, repair mechanisms are all set into motion, all the building materials needed to repair that and form a scab are pushed there, which includes cholesterol, because that's a, build, a major building block for just about everything that goes on in the body. And then, because you can't afford to have a scab fall off in an artery, it would block it, the endothelium grows back over it, and it's subsumed into the artery wall. And that's what's called atherosclerosis. It's nothing inside the artery at all. It's actually inside the artery wall. What you've got to look at is what's causing damage to the lining of the artery wall. Because once you've damaged the lining of the artery wall, in a very simplistic way, those clots become covered up. The repair process pulls them into the artery wall, but they then become a focus for further development of damage. And if you want to know what causes heart disease, you have to look at things that damage the artery wall, interfere with the disease process, and cause increased blood clotting. That's really what you're looking at here. When we have a cholesterol test, the results are usually described in terms of good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. The good cholesterol is called HDL, and the bad cholesterol is called LDL. What HDL and LDL are, are carriers. These molecules are made up of fats, proteins, certain vitamins, and other structural factors and within them the cholesterol sits. So to a degree the HDL and the LDL are transport uh, mechanisms. 
or little lorries that carry the cholesterol to the parts of the body that need them. We've been given the idea that the high density lipoprotein is good for us and the low density lipoprotein is bad for us. But we also know that a lot of other things are carried. CoQ10, which is a specialised enzyme required in many different processes, but predominantly needed in mitochondria, which are the little batteries that live inside cells and give the cell energy to function in the way that it should. A cardiac muscle, a heart muscle, can have two or three thousand um, mitochondria. And without CoQ10, the process of turning oxygen and sugar into energy is not going to function at an optimum. Beta carotene, uh, the, the more functional form of vitamin A in the body. We also know that vitamin E is carried by the HDLs and LDLs. And this is a very important vitamin because it's a powerful antioxidant. Cholesterol-lowering medications, in particular statins, are prescribed to lower bad cholesterol levels. However, a large study published in the American Heart Journal in 2009 found that the level of so-called bad cholesterol is actually lower in people with heart disease, not higher. This study included around 137,000 people who had been admitted to hospital with heart disease. It included patients from 541 hospitals in the United States. All of these people had their LDL level measured within 24 hours of admission. The researchers found that the average LDL level for this group of people was actually lower than the average level for the American general population. The average level for people with heart disease was 104 and the average for the general population was 123. If people with heart disease have lower levels of so-called bad cholesterol, why are some countries around the world spending billions of dollars each year lowering these levels? I think it's fair to say that we can't look at HDL or LDL and say that one is good and one is bad. In fact, the studies now show that drugs that increase HDL had to be stopped because they increased the rate of heart attacks. Well, the theory is false, but it's gained so much momentum and it's become so lucrative that it's, it's almost like a freight train going down a hill. And in fact, I find it interesting at exactly the same time that Verkau was talking about his idea of cholesterol causing heart disease, Rokitansky was proposing that these plaques are caused by blood clots on the surface of arteries. That was 1851. Uh, he was right, Verkau was wrong. It just so happens Verkau's idea took over the world, if you like.